Rosalind Mason, and not only am I a proud member of Dare to Imagine, I'm the manager of the Imagine Market. The Imagine Market was created for our members to show their love for Jesus Christ and Dare to Imagine. We carry t-shirts, sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, and just recently we've gotten new merchandise and we have men and women's activewear, caps, and even sun visors. If you're interested in making a purchase, you can come see me on Sundays between worship services, or you can go to our website, d2ic.org forward slash store to see all of our merchandise. If you're interested in becoming a volunteer here at the Imagine Market, you can email me at roslyn at d2ic.org. I hope to see you soon in some Imagine Market gear. And remember that life is better when you dare to imagine. I'm Kevin Johnson, and I want to personally welcome you to this place called Dare to Imagine. I want you to know it's here at D2I that we help people to have an encounter with God. Yes, we connect people to Jesus Christ, empowering them to dare to imagine and to live a better life. There's a little timer that's there, and our worship service is about to begin. So I want you to go ahead and invite your family and your friends and get ready for an encounter with God like you've never experienced before. And beloved, remember this, life is better when you dare to imagine. Come on, people of God, put those blessed hands together. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let the people of God say yeah. 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 Everybody. Let the people of God say yeah. Everybody. Let the people of God say yeah. Let the people of God say yeah. Let the people of God say yeah. Y'all know this song. It's an old school song, but it's a goodie. Listen. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord.
I go like this. When I look back, when I look back over all the years that I made it through, I can't imagine where I'd be now if it wasn't for you. Well, your favor rests upon me. I can your favor is just what I need. Well, your favor rests upon me. I can favor is just what I need. Well, your favor rests upon me. I can favor is just what I need. But I'm so Fato! 
are happy to be able to be in the house of the Lord, whether you're physically in this place or sitting at home or in another place. We know that God is everywhere. He is all around us. And we just simply want to give him all, right? Good morning, dare to imagine. We're just so grateful to be able to see you this morning. I want to share a few things that's happening in our community with you as we continue to usher in the spirit of the Lord and feel the Holy Spirit in this place. We want to remind you that this is a community that loves you. We welcome you. We want to uh, be able to engage with you. And we have a lot of things happening even as we go into this fall season. So we want to lift up. We have a harvest festival, a trunk or treat here for our children and families to be able to celebrate and bring you together. We want you to come out, come right on in here to our parking lot and you can come in and experience the trunk or treat for children. That's October 24th. And we know that we have um, some other things happening. We have coats um, that we are gathering. If you have coats that you'd like to donate, um, we will be giving coats away this season as well. So we know that Dare to Imagine, we continue um, to serve God by serving others. Amen. And we want to be able to continue to pour into others the way that we know God has poured into us. We know that there but by the grace of God go I. So we want to be able to lift up others. We know, beloved, that it is that voting season. Amen. There's a lot happening in the world, a lot happening in our country, a lot happening in our state. Um, for those of us here in Pennsylvania, we are considered a what? A swing state, right? Um, and we are very much 
encouraging everyone to exercise your constitutional right and vote. Amen. We know that you must vote. Um, you must get engaged if you want to see change engage. Amen. Um, so we want to encourage everyone to vote. Um, vote on November 3rd. Um, if you are going to vote in person, the polls are open. Obviously, you should be following COVID-19 masking guidelines. Um, you can vote by mail, again, here in Pennsylvania and other states. That may be your option. However you go about it, we want you to vote. Amen. We want you to vote. That is our right. So we have a video here we want you to look at as we talk about voting. Amen. Mail-in voting is a new, easy, and secure option for PA voters to vote their ballots in 2020 and future elections. Anyone can vote by mail-in ballot without providing a reason. To begin, you should apply for a mail-in ballot. You can do this online, by mail, or at your county's election office. While you are applying, you can request to be added to an annual mail-in ballot request list where you will automatically receive ballots for the remainder of the year. Your county will send you a renewal application each year. If you provide an email address when you apply, you'll receive updates along the way as your application and ballot are processed. You can also track your ballot at votespa.com slash mail ballot status. When your request is processed, your county election office will mail your ballot to you as soon as your ballot becomes available. After you receive your mail-in ballot, complete all of the ballot selections with a blue or black pen. Seal the ballot in the plain white official ballot envelope and place the ballot envelope into the large return envelope. Then sign, date, and complete the voter's declaration on the envelope. Now that your ballot is ready to be returned, check to see if your envelope is prepaid or if it needs a stamp and drop it in the mail. Your ballot must be received by your county's election board before 8 p.m. on election day. When your ballot is received, your county election office will mark your ballot as received and will process the ballot for counting. If you return your vote mail-in ballot by the deadline, you may not vote at your polling place on election day. If you do not return your vote mail-in ballot by the deadline and you want to vote in person, you have two options. Bring your unvoted ballot in the return envelope with the voter's declaration to your polling place and turn it in so you can vote on your county's voting system. Or, if you don't have your ballot, you can vote by provisional ballot at your polling place. Keep in mind you can avoid the lines at your polling place by returning your voted mail-in ballot to the county election board office or other site designated by your county election board before 8 p.m. on election day. When using mail-in voting, you can be sure that your vote is secure and private. Visit votespa.com backslash mail ballot to learn more about mail-in voting. Amen. So we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We want everyone to be informed. We want you to be engaged. So, so glad to be able to show folks. It's one thing to say, go ahead and vote. And it's another way to make sure people know how to exercise that right. Amen. We want you to be able to exercise that right. So thank you so much for that. Well, it is offering time. It is offering time. This is the time time of the service that everybody can participate in. We're able to continue to um, have the ministries like the trunk or treat and give away coats and all the things that we do because of our giving. Um, so we want to encourage everybody to give. You know how we do dare to imagine you can use push pay you can give electronically from home from wherever you may be right here you don't have to touch anybody you don't even have to touch the basket although we pray for the basket in Jesus name um, but we want to encourage you to just take out your phone and you can text D2I church app D2I church space app to 77977 you can get our app and there you will get the link for push pay so that you can give. So as we are giving, let's worship the Lord and go to God with praise. Amen. Hey.
bless us so that we could give and we want to highlight our other opportunities so you can sign up for recurring giving those of us who are signing up for recurring giving that means you don't even have to think about it you just say hey yeah I'm gonna give um, and I'm gonna give in regular increments and I don't even have to think about it and when you sign up and do that we will send you a gift a gift from dare to imagine including a wonderful dare to imagine face mask yes um and so we have a beautiful packet you can pick it up if you happen to come um to the church um during service we will have it available for you or we will mail it to you amen so we want to make sure that you can sign up for recurring giving and we will say thank you um and ensure that you get your gift well that is one way that we can give but we certainly want to highlight our expand the vision. We know that over the course of this year, it has been a difficult year for many, right? Ain't many. Um, we have had businesses that have been um, struggling. We have had folks who have been in need and dare to imagine wants to continue to stand in that gap. And we want to encourage everybody to give to our Expand the Vision uh, campaign. God can truly bless us and allow us to do that. So Let's check out this video to see how God is using us to expand the vision. Amen. Today we're preparing for Chosen 300, uh, 106 meals for the needy, not the homeless. We knew that there was a need for, you know, this kind of thing, but it's evil. I see the need. I see the homeless out in the street all the time. I see them soliciting um, when you drive down the street. And it's like, okay, I have, I have to volunteer and give back so that they can have. Uh, growing up, um, I was always taught to put others first. So that's what we do here. It's good to give to others to help them, to bring them up. Because sometimes people are just so um, sort of like downtrodden and they feel that nobody cares. So when we do this, we let them know that somebody cares for them. I volunteer because it's something special in my heart that God has placed on my heart and I like to see a smile on someone else's face. My name is Joanne Armstrong and I'm a volunteer here at D2I. My name is Juanita Ford and I am a volunteer. I'm John Tyler, I'm a volunteer. Amen, we praise God for our volunteers and we know that Christ said that 
when you were when I was hungry did you feed me amen so we want to encourage everybody to give to our expand the vision you can give the same way um, that I talked about before you can simply text D2I church app to 77977 get that push pay link and when you go in just Tre uh, check off that expand the vision and we will ensure um, that we can continue to pour in amen We invite you to stand up wherever you are so that we may thank God for these gifts. Amen. Dear God, we're just grateful to be able to be in a position to give and to give back to you, God. God, we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed on us and our hearts to be able to give and sow a seed into so many others. God, we thank you for Dare to Imagine, what you are doing through this church. We ask you, God, to continue to uplift individuals, families, communities, and this world. May God, you be glorified in our giving. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Today is the last day of praise in the park at 11 a.m. Last day of praise in the park. This season, the last time we're going to be outside, is starting to get a little cooler now. And some have asked, you know, Sister Kemia, we like that gear you got on. I know. I know. I'm dressed for the park. I'm dressed for the park. I'm ready to praise. I'm ready to praise God in the park. If you want to see some of our gear, of course, you can check out um, all of our stuff at Detail yc.org go on to our app you might be able to get some nice dare to imagine gear that like i got on today but we know that there is a word from the lord so we are ready to hear from our pastor in just a moment but before we do let's worship god and go to god and just uplift his name in worship amen yeah. Not going back, moving ahead, here to declare to you, my past is over in you, my things are made new, surrendered my life to Christ, moving, moving forward. Brought me to such freedom. 
I have found in you, you're a healer who makes all things new, yeah, yeah, yeah.
You make all things new, yeah. You make all things new, yeah. I will follow you forward. Come on, if you don't mind, let's just stand up on our feet. If you're at home, we invite you now to stand up on your feet. How many of you want to move forward? How many of you want God to do some amazing things in your life? How many of you want God to do something you've never seen before? Then I want you to pray this prayer with me. God, move me forward. God, move me forward. God, move me forward. In your name we pray. God, we give your name the glory. Amen. Amen. Come on and bless God's name today. Put your hands together. Let's bless God. Amen. You may take your seats. Beloved, it's so good to, to be with each and every one of you. Um, I want to thank Kimia for lifting uh, the offering this morning. And uh, the great thing about push pay is that you can kind of see uh, where your numbers are, and we didn't hit the numbers yet, so y'all go ahead and go on to push pay, amen. And so go right there to D2I Church app to 77977 and give your offering. God is doing some great work here at our church, and we need for all of you, if you're watching from wherever you are, uh, we want you to be a part of what the Lord is doing here to make your investment into this ministry, uh, because it's how we do things to help bless other people, how we give away scholarships. Matter of fact, we are giving away over six scholarships to students who are in school, book scholarships today. They are getting checks today. So y'all need to make sure y'all go on to push pay right now. Amen. Uh, so we just thank God for what he's doing. I am just thankful to each and every one of you, and I'm thankful uh, for how the Lord continues to bless us during this season. And as I have just concluded last month, we kicked off this series and we started in August and I ended it last month in September, we were really looking at reposition. And so today the Lord has really just placed upon my heart that we would deal with this sermon today and kicking off a new series for this month and it may go into next month, but it's called Forward. Amen. Forward. Come on. Can you say it with me? Can you put it right there in the chat? Forward. Say with me, forward, amen, forward, forward. You know, it's one thing to say that you're going to reposition, and then you can reposition, but you don't do anything about it. And so God's blessed me with this word today about moving forward. And so I want you to go ahead and start watch parties right now. I want you to tag someone who needs to hear this message. If you're here in the sanctuary, go ahead and share it on your various platforms, because I believe that this word is going to bless someone today as we talk about forward. Let us turn now to Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42, and as you're turning to Job 42, I do want to emphasize, Kimi did a great job of emphasizing the need to vote, and I want to make sure that you all register to vote, that you do it by ballot, um, mail-in ballot, or you go like I'm going straight to the polls. I don't want no issues with my vote. So I'm going to have my mask, I'm going to take my chair, and I'm going to be right there outside the polling place ready to vote. But we must make sure that this is, uh, this is a critical election, and we want to make sure that all of us are voting. Job chapter 42, and I'm just going to uplift just one verse this morning. And listen to what the Word of God says. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. Amen. 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 To kick off this sermon series today on forward, I want to use as, as a subject just really one word, and that's half time. Half time. Anybody like sports today? Anybody like sports? Any sports fans in here online? You like sports? I mean, share with me right now, who's your favorite team? I, I know a lot of y'all, it's football season, so you're going to say the Eagles. That's fine. Go ahead and say the Eagles. Any Cowboys fans online? Cowboys fans? Redskins? I mean, whatever your team is, uh, it's, 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 I want to talk today about halftime. You know, as I think about this, I think about Aaron. I see Aaron out there, and I see Brother J. Pat. We kind of have this thing that during this season, 
uh, that we will send text messages to one another. And part of what we do is that we banter one another. I mean, it's all in good fun. And I love this particular season and football is because it gives us an opportunity to not only bond as men, but to bond as just Christians. And so as I think about this word today, I've been looking at sports and looking at how the rhythm and the flow of sports operates. You know, many games, and when you look at them, whether if it's basketball or if it's football, all of them, they have different break periods. When you look at basketball, basketball is divided up into what? Four periods, if you will. Each of those periods, it has its particular time season. And what the players have to end up doing is to score as many points during that period because they know that the game only has four periods. The same thing is true when you look at football. Football is that type of sport that has four quarters and you know how it goes is that you got the first quarter and the second quarter, the third quarter and the fourth quarter. And in fact, when you look at just different sports, all of them are designed because they have four quarters or four periods, but then they have what is known as what? Halftime. Yes, it's during halftime that, that the players, they have a chance to go back to the locker room. They have a chance to go back to see how they're going to strategize to try to end this game. And for those who are spectators like you and me, what we end up doing is, especially if it's an HBCU, any HBCU grads in here today online, come on, tell me where you're from. From Morehouse, from Spelman, from Howard, from Hampton. If you're from Xavier, Fisk University, Delaware State, where you from? Talk to me today. And I'm, I'm sharing this with you because at a HBCU, we don't really go to see the football game. We don't go to see who's going to win. No, we go for what? The halftime show. Yet at HBCU, you know that the band is going to throw down. And there is, and at Morehouse, I used to love it because we didn't have a good football team. No, we, we didn't go to go see Morehouse win. Matter of fact, we expected every homecoming that our team was going to lose. And so we just got used to, we got used to homecoming being that we were going to lose on homecoming, but we knew that the halftime show is where the time was. Yes, halftime can be for those who are watching as spectators. It's, it's entertainment. If you think about Super Bowl, it's the opportunity in which people end up uh, watching some star perform for that particular period. But for the players, for the players, it's a time for them, Calvin, to end up thinking about assessing where they are and where they need to be in order to finish the game. And this is where we find Job in this text. Job, I would dare share with you, he's at halftime. You see, I say that Job's at halftime is because when you understand Job's story and you understand how this scripture begins to unveil for us, Job was at a point in his life where everything was going well. The first, if you will, part of his life, the first quarter of his life was beautiful. God had blessed him beyond measure. He had a beautiful wife. He had beautiful children. Job had it all. He had a beautiful house. But you know how it is sometimes in the midst of life and everything that you are going through. Life has a way of throwing you a curveball. Life has a way of turning your whole life and situation around. And that's where we find Job in his text. You see, many of us, the first quarter of our lives have been great. We've enjoyed them. But now we're in another season in our lives and we're trying to figure out how are we going to end this life game. That's where we find Job in this text. Job has had a great start. Job has started out. His first quarter was great, but something happened in his second quarter, his second period. And now we find Job in the midst of halftime. And whenever you're at a halftime moment, the first thing that you and I need to do is to take stock of where we are. Come on, put it right there in the chat that you got to take stock of where you are. Yes, when you, you know that you're at halftime and 
What happens in the midst of halftime is that you begin to take stock. You begin to assess where you are. You begin to look at what is it going to take in order for me to get to the next level in my life. And if we're really honest with ourselves, there are so many of us right now in the midst of this COVID-19 season that we're in the midst of halftime. We're in the midst of saying, God, I know that you have something better for me. God, I know that there's something else you want to do in my life. God, I know that you want to bless me beyond measure. But God, I'm at halftime. Yes, halftime can either make you or break you. Halftime can determine what your future is going to be like or not be like. Halftime it makes the, is a decision really for those who are, who are going to finish strong or those who are simply going to throw in the towel. Yes, real champions are made at halftime. And what I love about different sports teams is, is that it doesn't matter listening to different coaches. You see, if you got a real coach, a real coach will end up saying to you that I know it looks bad, but let's go to the locker room. I know it looks bad, but let's go and have a little talk. And see, you may not be on a sports team. You may not have Doc Rivers as your coach. I'm so glad Doc Rivers is coming to the, the Sixers. Are y'all glad about that? Amen. Amen. We got a brother coming to lead our team. But what I love about watching coaches is that if you got a real coach, a real coach is not upset about if you're down at halftime is because the coach knows that if I can get you in the locker room, we have a good conversation, that I can get your mind right, get your mind back into the game so that you can get back into the game and begin to win. Can I go ahead and talk to you right now? You see, when you're at halftime, you got to take stock of where you are, and that's when you get to the point where you say, God, get my mind right. How do you get your mind right? You get your your mind right by going to God in prayer. You see, prayer, prayer is our locker room. Prayer is our opportunity to talk to God. Prayer is where we have that encounter with God. I know y'all don't think that I that I, that I, that I really, uh, and I'm just kind of making this up, but it's right there in the text. Let's go right there to Job chapter 42, verse 1. This is why I know that Job's at halftime because the text says, then Job replied to the Lord and he says, I know that you can do what? All things. <laughs> Listen to Job talk to God. He says, no purpose of yours can be thwarted. He says, you ask, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand. He says, things too wonderful for me to know. Job goes on and he says, you said, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Job says, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Oh, beloved, I want you to know that Job gets to the point to where he has that conversation with God because he knows that he's at halftime. You see, when you're at a point where you feel like throwing in the towel, when you're at the point when you feel like not going on, that's when you know that you're at halftime. And Job, Job does something here that just blesses me. Job ends up praying to God because Job understands this is that it's not just to take stock, but it's the second point I got to give you. And that is stay in the game, but just adjust your plan. <laughs> oh, my God. You see, there's so many of us, we are so ready to throw in the towel. We're so ready to give up. But what I love about Job is that Job says, I lost everything. I lost my house. I lost my children. I lost my cattle and my sheep and my oxen. I lost my money. I lost everything. But Job says, I'm just crazy enough to believe that I'm just crazy enough to keep on believing that God, if you did it once, oh my God, I wish I had somebody in here today, that God, if you did it once, I just know that you can do it again. Is there anybody who knows what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been at halftime before? I mean, where you really felt like throwing in the towel? 
But Job, what I love about him is that Job stayed in the game and he just adjusted his plan. I mean, look at Job. Job just didn't pray. But Job, like many of us, Job had some, some stuff that he was dealing with. And what Job was dealing with was the fact that he had some friends who really did not have his back. I mean, it's right there in the text. And, and when you know that God is about to move in your life, and you know that God is about to bless you beyond measure, is that sometimes your blessing is dependent upon how you treat other people. That's not KJ saying that. That's God saying that. Y'all still don't believe me going right here to, to verse 10. I got to give it to you. And the text says right there in verse 10, it says, After Job had prayed for his friends, then the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Can I go ahead and shout you right quick? Some of y'all are missing the blessings that God has for you all because you don't want to pray for your enemies, all because you don't want to pray for somebody else. But sometimes you're on the brink of your blessing, but God says, I need you to pray for your brothers and sisters. I need you to pray for somebody else. I need for you to pray for to God like you've never prayed before. Sometimes our blessings are right there, but we have to begin to adjust our plans and say, God, I just don't want to be blessed, but God bless my friends. God, forgive them of what they've done to me because when you do that, that's when God begins to bless you beyond measure. How many of you, you've been saying to God, God, why won't you bless me? Why won't you move in my life? And God says, have you prayed for somebody else? One of the most difficult things for me to do in ministry has been to pray for folk who I knew did not have my back. I mean to pray for folk who were trying to take me out. And what I discovered about God is that sometimes if you hold on, watch this now, or if you get this, you'll be running all around this church, running all around your house, is that sometimes God can't bless you with something because you don't have any space for God because your heart is filled with so much anger and hate that God says, until you release that, I can't give you what I have for you in your life. And that's why you got to let some things go. That's why you got to let some pain go. That's why you can't look at your first quarter and your second quarter. But you got to say, God, I'm forgetting all of the first and the second quarter. And God, I'm focusing on my third and my fourth quarter. There are just some things that I've just got to let go. You can't do anything about what happened this year, let it go. You can't do anything about the first uh, uh, nine months of this year, let it go. You can't do anything about the fact that you have lost your job, let it go. You can't do anything about the fact that things have gone crazy in your life, let it go. You can't do anything about the past. But what you can do is to do something about your next quarter in your life. And that's why I'm preaching this sermon series called Forward. Because if we're really honest, there are some of us right now, we are at the brink of our blessing and we're missing our blessing because we are focused more on the first and the second quarters than we are on the third and the fourth quarters that we have not even played yet because we're in the midst of halftime. There's this third thing I'm going to give you, and I'm done for today. That is what we learn here from Job. 
what we learn here from Job, and that is this, is that Job shares with us that once you adjust your plan and you learn how to stay in the game, that Job says, then you've got to give it all you got. Come on, put it right there in the chat. Give it all you got. I mean, you can't sit up here and say, I'm going to win. Have you ever seen a team that has decided, look, I'm going to stay in the game, but I'm not going to give it all that I got? You know, I, I'm, uh, my favorite sports is really basketball and, and football. And I'm not the biggest um, baseball fan. And, you know, when you think about all of these different sports, all these different sports, they have different um, ways in which the game is organized. You know, basketball is designed so that you have the first and second uh, periods, then you have the halftime, then you have the third and the fourth. Same thing with football. And, and what I've discovered is like whether it's soccer or any of these type of uh, um, sports is that they have different ways in which they are designed. And what I've learned about baseball and softball is that they really don't have quote-unquote breaks. I mean, really, the only breaks that they really have is when they, they end an inning and then they end up switching uh, the, t- the teams, the one that was out there first and the next one goes out there. But when you think about baseball, they really don't, quote, unquote, have a real kind of break. There is not really, uh, it's just continuous kind of play of game. Uh, it's not like how baseball, excuse me, how basketball and football are designed. But what baseball does have is what's called the seventh inning stretch. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about, j I know you do. Is that the seven inning stretch is that it was designed because people have been sitting in their seats the entire time. And so the seventh inning stretch was designed simply to allow those who have been spectators this entire time for them to get up and the stretch. Yes, people who know and who watch baseball, many of them, they take advantage of this because they know that if the baseball, because most of the time the games are not really high uh, number games. It's not like they're doing 20 uh, hits or 20 runs that they have scored, 20 home runs. No, it's normally just very low, but they know that in the seventh inning that this could determine uh, the future of the game. Yes, it's called the seventh inning stretch. Yes, it's during this particular time that people begin to make their way. They go to the restroom. They go to the concession stands and they come back ready and excited. And the, what they end up doing is they say, take me to the ballpark. Yes, they start to sing that song because it's the seventh inning stretch and I just want to go ahead and shout somebody here today I don't know what's going on in your life I don't know what pain you have been through but I'm just crazy enough to believe that this is your seventh inning stretch all you got to do is to get up on your feet and begin to stretch out your hands to God and say God I know I can't do anything about the first half but God I'm going to stretch myself to thee because God I know that you've still got a blessing for me is there anybody who's ready to stretch is there anybody who can lift up holy hands is there anybody who can say God I know that you're not done with me you've got to learn how to stretch and to give it all you got this is halftime what I've discovered is that when you give it all you got, is that God will bless you. I know you don't believe me. Let's go back to the scripture. Verse 10, the word of God says, after Job prayed for his friends, you can come on in, BJ. The Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. And verse 11 goes on and it says there, and all his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble that the Lord had brought on him. That's a whole sermon right there because sometimes we don't like to sit up here and assign things to God, but sometimes God will allow for things to happen in your life and it says, and each one of them gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The verse goes on and says, the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life 
more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And the word says, and he also had seven sons and three daughters. The word goes on and says the first daughter he named Gemini and had the second Kizia and the third Karen Kahapach. And then watch this. It says, now we're nowhere in all the land where they're found women as beautiful as Job's daughters. And their father, watch this now, granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. Beloved, I want you to know how radical this is. It's because only the blessing went to the sons. But when you've been, you know that God's done some great things in your life, that you begin to expand that blessing to everybody who's in your house and who you come in contact with. You've got to learn how to stretch so God can bless you in your half time. I thank God today as we stand to our feet. There's somebody here who needed to hear this message. You needed to be reminded that it's not over. That this is your halftime season. You can't worry about the first quarter, the first period, the second quarter, the second period. No, it's halftime. And would you spend some time with God? Take some stock of your life. You begin to say, look, I'm going to stay in the game. I'm just going to adjust my plan. And then lastly, you say to yourself, and I'm going to give it all that I've got. And when you do that, I'm here to tell you that God will bless you. And matter of fact, not just bless you, but the word says what? That he will give you back more than what you lost. Beloved, you're looking at somebody right now who lost a lot. But every time I come to this place, I say, God, you bless me with more than I could ever dare to imagine. Do you mind if I pray with you right now? God, I pray right now, God, that you touch some man, some woman, some boy, girl. God, whatever it is, their dreams, whatever it is that you have for them, God, help them to have heard this sermon today and say, God, I know it's halftime, but God, I know that you can bless me. And God, I know that you can bless me the way that you blessed Job. So God, I'm readjusting my life. I'm getting connected with you. And God, I want you to bless my future days more than you bless my former days. God, we thank you right now for how you're going to bless and for how you're going to move. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't have a church home, we invite you to join here at Dare to Imagine Church. All you have to do is go to d2ic.org forward slash join, or you can simply send us a text here at 267-702-0001. And I want you to put in your full name and say, look, <laughs> I want to finish, finish strong with God. Why don't you come now as we give God our heart and we thank God for what he's doing. Just before they get ready to sing, go ahead and stretch out your hands right now. And I want you to say with me, this is what we do here at Dare to Imagine Church. Every time we end, we end with not only just with prayer, but we also say, 